Good morning, Valley City State University, and welcome to our second Senior Artist Talk featuring Zoe Cook's uh, Artist Talk over her exhibition, Exploration. I hope you guys all will enjoy, and we will now take it away to Zoe Cook. Thank you. Hi, my name is Zoe Cook, and this is my senior artist talk for my show, Exploration. So a little bit about me, I'm from Valley City, North Dakota, and what's made me interested in painting landscapes is all the time I've spent in the car driving out to my grandparents' house. Um, they live about 18 miles north of Valley City, and I've got to see all the seasons change and all the different fields and crops throughout the year. And that really made me interested in capturing that. So next I'm gonna go through a couple of my influences. Uh, the first is Van Gogh and you're probably familiar with who Van Gogh is and maybe a little bit about his work. But I got to see this specific painting in person at the Minneapolis Inst Institute of Art and what really made me enjoy this piece is how he uses um, this really pure purplish blue color and in the shadows of his foreground at the bottom there and he also uses that same color in the mountain areas in the back. So the next artist is Sar Sari Shirik, and she incorporates some of that same um, blues and purple tones into her shadows. But I really enjoy how she mixes between her more visible brush strokes, like in the sky, and then some more smooth blending. So I incorporate that in my work too. The first piece I'm gonna go through is titled Monumental. And I took this photograph at Monument Valley National Park in Utah. And when I was finished with this piece, it really changed um, all the others that I've started before it. So I went back through and incorporated some of what I learned in this painting and changed the other pieces to match this one. Like I had never done a pastel sky like this, so you can see how it's a very bright baby pink. And it really, I really love how it looks. So I went back through and changed my other skies to fit with this pastel landscape theme. So this is a comparison from the reference photo that I paint from and to the painting itself in its final form. Um, there is some of this purple tone into the like higher points on the rock, but I like to emphasize this and bring this out even further in my work. So when I'm painting from a reference, I really am deciding what I'm wanting to emphasize and what I want to let fade away out of that photo. So I simplified the landscape and it really puts all of the focus on those rocks. The second piece I'm gonna talk about is titled Moab. And I took this picture um, on a road trip from New Mexico to Salt Lake City, Utah. And this is in Moab, Utah. Um, so as you can see, this is the final piece, but it took a lot of layering and work to get there. Um, I really wanted to bring this kind of cool gray into a yellow brown in the dirt in the front of the painting, but then blow out this color scheme of orange and pink and purples into the rocks. So you can see um, I'm showing my underpainting, which is really just bring, it's like a roadmap of what I'm gonna do later. So. I fill in the colors and then that tells me whether I'm pushing that forward or if it's a shadow, I'm bringing it back. So it feels like a real landscape. 
like all these rocks have forms. Um, so really exploration for me was not only about actually going to these places, but it's also about just me bringing this new sense of color to my work. I'm experimenting with this new technique and I've really found that's what I've been exploring this whole time. Um, here's the other comparison of a reference photo. So you can see how much I've really changed from the original to like really draw the colors out of those rocks in the shadowed areas and make it feel like you're standing below this. The third piece I'm going to talk about today is Rock with Wings. Um, this is one of my bigger pieces in my show and I love this stark difference between the light and the dark areas on this rock. Um, there's a little bit of orange in the pink areas, so it's a kind of a nice complementary color between orange and blue in the shadows. Uh, and the sagebrush really gives it like this sense of immense scale that these are little tiny brushy areas and then the rock just sits high up in the skyline. The next piece is titled Badlands. And I like to think of this one as a bridge between my southwestern work and my northern um, landscape work. And it's a good mix between the rocky desert colors and the greenery that's found in the north. Um, so if you've been to the Badlands, you'll know that there's a lot of layering in the soil that gives it its color. Um, so for the white, whiter and like light gray areas of the soil, I changed those colors to be like light pink and like a light yellow sort of color. And then for the mid-tone coloration, it's, I changed it to be like medium pink and some peachy kind of oranges. And then for the deeper shadowy areas, like in the crevices of the cliffs and stuff, um, I changed those to purples and blues. And you'll see that as a running theme throughout my paintings. So the next one is titled Reflection. And I took this photo at the top of the Gooseberry Falls waterfall. Um, and I think that this piece really pushed my exploration of color more. Uh, it is much less maybe realistic um, and I really got to play with all the shadow and light in this specific photograph. Um, so because it was in a forest, the, sh the trees are shading some areas and then some are in the sunlight. So I got to push the blues and pinks where the blues are the shadows, the pinks are the bright areas and just play with a lot of different colors in the water reflections. I've never been very comfortable painting like forests and trees. So it was really fun to get to work on something that really pushed me out of my comfort zone. And the last piece I'm gonna talk about today is titled The M. And this is actually a hiking trail in Bozeman, Montana. And it's the hiking trail is called The M. Um, and this is my biggest piece in the show. It's 24 by 36 inches. And what was so different about this is I actually used two sort of different reference photos and I really dive deep into editing when the center one. Um, but I used the reference more on the right side to paint from for the foreground, the parts that are closest to you. So you can see that really stark difference in greens and then the background blues in the trees. And I really wanted to like give it depth and that's how I've found is the best way is to just change that color to make the, that background feel much more like in the distance further away. So you can see I'm 
painting over my underpainting in with like this more detailed, um, like more details in the trees and the grassy areas. But yeah. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them. Thank you for listening to me today. So Zoe, thank you very much. And just watching the time lapse alone is just a beautiful process. <laughs> thank you. Um, so a couple questions. What is your dream project? Um, I think my dream project would be to paint a mural. I want. I think that's one of my goals is to like be able to paint a big mural, maybe of a landscape, kind of like what I've done here. Awesome. So like any large scale, like billboard size? Yeah, like something large scale. I think that would be so fun to do. Awesome. I'd really get to explore that size difference. Mm -hmm. <laughs> From the, because the largest you have painted was the 24 by 30 out? I think like 30 by 40 inches is the largest canvas I've painted, but getting to paint something even bigger than that, like you can be so much more detailed when you a large surface. Yes, definitely. Is there any other 2D art you would like to make? Um, I really enjoy making all sorts of different 2D art, like, like printmaking I enjoy and even watercolor and stuff, but I would like to try oil painting sometime. Mm -hmm. I've never done it yet, so someday I'll be able to. <laughs> it's a very messy messy medium <laughs> yeah but it's it seems so different than acrylic mm -hmm. which is what i use in my all of my paintings so far yeah but i would really like to try it and there's a lot of environmentally safe ones too yeah. so at least yeah the, the process and since we're talking with painting which painting process is your favorite and why um i think my my, I think my painting process is pretty standard for most painters is working from sort of a reference or, I mean, some people paint like outdoors, which I'd also love to try, but I, I just like layering. I think I am able to step back from it and see where I want to change things. And yeah, layering is my favorite thing. Like, Getting to paint with thinner paint versus thicker paint and just seeing the difference in tones I can make. With the highlight, low lights, yeah. and tones. Awesome. So since we're still on painting, what is your most important artist tool that you have to have with you at all times? Um, I have a few different ones. My, okay. my palette is very obvious. Um, I have a couple brushes that are my particular favorite ones. That's such like an artsy thing to have a favorite brush mm -hmm. out of all of them. But, and then I also have a spray bottle because I like to kind of work with a wet painting. So I'm always constantly like spraying my canvas and my palette down. So it's probably my spray bottles, maybe my most favorite thing. Spray bottle. <laughs> Here's a painter question. What's the tube of paint you always have to have with you at all times? Hot pink. Hot pink. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, I need magentas, I need yeah, pinks and purples and oranges. That's what I like to work with. Awesome. So you're hoping with your oil paints to get a whole set yeah, of... Yeah, that's why I like acrylic so much. There's so many bright colors, but hopefully that is also in oils. Oops. I don't know if they make hot pink or... <laughs> I think there is one, but... <laughs> with the magenta, but I know acrylics are, they always have that nice. Yes, they have a very wide range of colors, which I like to work with. So here's one not art related. What food, drink, or song has inspired you? Uh, um, that's an interesting question. <laughs> I think, um, I definitely listen to a lot of music while painting. Um, it helps pass the time, helps mm -hmm. keep you interested in what you're doing. Um, I would probably have to say like maybe Amy Winehouse is 
is such mm. a favorite. Um, and just so many others. And probably coffee keeps me going, too. <laughs> I think that's my favorite food to have on hand. Is there a certain way you like your coffee? Um, I'm kind of open to trying a lot of different coffees. I've been drinking a lot of macchiatos lately, but sometimes I like Mar Americanos or cappuccinos. So I'm anything with espresso is good for me. <laughs> Are you hoping to do a series of paintings just based off a of coffee? Oh, that would be fun to paint like some latte mm -hmm. art and make it really colorful. Yeah. Future painting. <laughs> That'd be fun. <laughs> So, um, how did you start making art? Um, I think I've just been interested in it, like, my whole <laughs> life. I know um, my great-grandma would always tell me my two favorite shows as a kid was Bob Ross and Martha Stewart. So, <laughs> I think even since I was, like, five years old, I've been more interested in that uh, artsy type of, like, shows and stuff but yeah I've been drawing just my whole life and in high school I painted a lot mm -hmm. and drew a lot and collage so I've just always been doing it <laughs> and we have one from the chat is there a type of art that you would love to view but don't create yourself like is there like a piece you would like to be able to go view oh yeah um, I think it's such a good experience um, to go look at different art, even if that's not what you're interested in, because you can always learn something new mm -hmm. from looking at it. I'm, so many people use colors and paint differently than I do. I like to make it bright, but there's a lot that paint more moody type of work, mm -hmm. and it's just so interesting to see, I think. It can really get the gears turned into something that you want to bring into your own paintings. Is there a place you're hoping to travel to soon that you haven't been that um, to do a new landscape yeah. series? So I got to check off my West Coast state bucket list because I've never been to California. So I think I would definitely like to see um, like California desert and also the beaches there. The like cool. Joshua Tree. Ooh, <laughs> I want to go to Joshua Tree. That would be a nice. <laughs> That's a really beautiful national park yeah. to go see. And what, what advice do you give to any of the VCSU students currently in the art program or the non-art majors? What um, advice could you give them? I'd say just keep working on what you love. Um, focus on that and all the rest falls into place. But. If you love creating, just go for it. Make everything you possibly can while you're here. <laughs> Embrace the place you have now, you know? I think that's my advice. Awesome. What are you hoping to do after you graduate? Um, be, I think it's my goal to like be in as much art shows as I possibly can mm -hmm. and create a lot of work and get to see some more new places that'll maybe inspire my future work. Ooh, and I have a question. What is your favorite time of day or night to paint? Like, um, I think I paint the best probably in the afternoon or maybe the evening, but I don't know, sometimes painting in the morning is not, <laughs> I'm not really a morning person. <laughs> And another question, are you planning, it sounds like you are planning on painting for a living, for freelancing, mm -hmm. or are you hoping to go on to graduate school? Or Yeah, I think um, graduate school definitely might be in my plans okay. in the future to go for my Master's of Fine Arts. Fine Arts. Are you hoping to just focus in painting when you go to that area, or? Yeah, painting. that would be my focus, I focus. think. Focus. Yeah. And let's see. And do you prefer sunrises or sunsets? Ooh. <laughs> I think I prefer sunsets, truthfully. Like, North Dakota has some really amazing sunsets, but also, mm -hmm. if you're ever in the Southwest, you, it's just a totally different type, I think. There's a lot more um, 
red coloration mm -hmm. and I think it really blends with the dirt beautifully. So yeah, Ooh. sunsets are my favorite. Sunsets, okay. I'm not really a morning person either. <laughs> so. <laughs> and how long did these pieces take for you to complete? And did you spend more time on any of these in your show than any others? Mm. So I painted all these pieces over this semester. So since um, we came back after Christmas break, I've been painting. Um, and yeah, some took longer than others. I think the last one I showed, the M, I've been working on that one a lot. And I really had to paint some of the others and kind of find what I was doing before I could mm -hmm. finally complete it. And some of them are so easy, I don't know what it is. And then some others, like, it's just a tooth and nail battle between <laughs> me and the canvas <laughs> to work on it. And let's see, is there any other? Is there a favorite piece in the show? Ooh, my favorite piece. <laughs> um, I mean, I love them all, <laughs> but I really enjoy the Badlands piece. Um, I feel really connected to that one, and I like how small it is. That's my smallest piece. It's just, it was really fun to paint and work on. And we have another question. Were there any pieces that almost made it into your show but didn't quite make the call? Um, and, hmm. I do, sorry. I do and then also, that. if not, how did you decide about these specific pieces? Um, actually, I painted all of these for my show, so that's kind of, I knew what theme I was going with. Um, I didn't really have any others that almost made it in anyways. So these ones were specific for my show. So specific and... Yeah. This was their purpose. Purpose. <laughs> <laughs> and is there any place, because I know you kept with the Southwest, Montana, North Dakota, is there mm -hmm. any place you wish you could have put in the show if you had a chance, extra time? Oh, <laughs> see the problem is, is that I have painted so many landscapes over the past couple of years, I need to travel more and take some pictures to catch up. But um, I would maybe have liked to do like more from North Dakota and even in Minnesota. There's so many more landscapes I could be doing, you know? But I like what's in here right now. I think awesome. it's a good mix. And then I know your entire exhibition was entirely of paintings, but just out of curiosity, is there a different process in your creative process for painting versus creating digital art? Is there something, because you did talk about manipulating the photos, is there? Yeah, so I, before I ever start painting, I do work on my photos digitally. Sometimes I'm like editing out certain areas that I don't want, and especially changing the color, that's, I do that to everyone, but I, I just try to look for an interesting photo that I can bring out colors that I'm looking for. And digital art is so different than painting, but it kind of almost works in a similar way if you think about it in layering, because painting is all about layering, but digital art, you work on layers yeah. as well. Photoshop is so wonderful. Mm -hmm. And then from another student, what advice do you have for students who may be struggling with deciding what mediums to use to put in their future shows? I think um, I, I had that struggle as well because I kind of like to think of myself as doing a broad range of different mediums, but I, I don't know, I just thought about it so long and finally this just clicked. So. Even if you're struggling with it now, maybe give it a couple months mm -hmm. and you, you might have like that spontaneous idea of, I know what I'm gonna do now. <laughs> the bright idea and yeah. work nonstop. Or you could do a mixed media show, mm -hmm. which I think would be really interesting. Yep. <laughs> it would be interesting because I know you used to do also silks, the screen printing yep. of doing the layers of. Yeah, I, I think that would be. Cool. I think it'll click. You'll you'll yeah. know what you want to do in the future. <laughs> yeah. 
I didn't know for a long time. <laughs> and then have you or would you ever paint without a picture to modify? Um, yes, I, I do, but usually not for landscapes, mm -hmm. I think. Whatever else I'm painting, I could, you know, not work from a picture always. But when it comes to landscapes, I think it's much more difficult to just think up what you're going to make. Um, so you can see in my work, I do change from the picture a lot. So I'm using it as the idea, but not necessarily everything I'm going to do is from the picture because I leave a lot of things out or I add different mm -hmm. textures or colors. Colors. And you're just hoping with your future paintings, are you hoping to still continue with the same palette, Zoe? Are you hoping to switch it up and? Um, I really like my palette currently. <laughs> I have about any rainbow color you could want, but I don't know, we'll just have to see what I, move on to in the future. I didn't always paint with such bright colors, um, but I've sort of found that is my niche right now is to do that. And does it look like there's any other questions other than I know you, I'm hoping you get to do your mural with yeah. <laughs> large scale, are you hoping in either North Dakota or would you go wherever they're looking for a mural? I think I would go wherever. Go I think it'd be really fun to do that. Awesome, it looks like we have no more questions. Okay. So Zoe, thank you very much for sharing your show, your talk. We will miss you here at the art department and we hope you come back to see the Center for mm -hmm. the Arts in spring 2022 when it opens. Yeah. <laughs> So again, everybody, VCSU students, faculty, staff, alumni, thank you very much for tuning in today to hear Zoe's talk. Uh, stay tuned for next week. We have our juried art exhibition and the award ceremony will be uh, taped, but made available next Friday. So please stay tuned for that. And thank you again and have a great weekend. It's beautiful out. <laughs> <laughs>